Okay, hopefully a short video this time. Uh, I got the question, how do you thin down a thick tip or a drill-like tip? There's actually three main ways that I can think of, but I'm only going to detail one of them, which for me is the easiest. To thin it down, uh, you're going to lose some of the tip no matter what you do. So to thin this down, you're going to lose some of the tip. It's not going to be as long as before. Okay. If you want to thin it down, but uh, leave the length perfectly intact, it's still going to be thick. It'll be more narrow, but it's still going to be thick. The ratio is still going to be bad. We're talking a ratio of about one to one. Well, to start with, you can thin it down to about uh, two to one just by picking at the sides and leaving the tip pointy. But you're going to have a very, very pointy tip. All right, so I'm not going to go over that method. I'm going to go over three methods where you're going to lose some of the tip. So there's actually four different methods that you can thin it down. Only one preserves the length, but you're going to be very, very narrow. Uh, so the, the way that I thin down tips like this that basically are a drill like tip is I grind the tip down in one direction take flakes off like fluting that's the way I prefer to thin down a tip just flute it that's one method. I'll show. How, I'll show you, and I'll do it with pressure. But you can also do it with percussion. I'm assuming that the person asking me this question gets into this situation with pressure flaking. Okay. Now the person that gets into this situation with pressure flaking is going to have a hard time using the techniques to thin it, no matter what. But I'll, I'll show you anyway. Okay. So you just. Kind of bevel it, grind it, and you're going to flute it. Okay. Same one on the other side. Now, if you have trouble pressure flaking and you get yourself into this drill-like situation, you probably won't be able to flute it. But this is the easiest. The other ways require more skill. It's a premature flickeration there. Hold on. Okay, so that thins it down quite a bit. You want to keep doing that until you get to a place where you want to be. Just keep sending in these long flakes from the tip or almost at the tip. Like right here. I'm going to follow this ridge. Hopefully this ridge here. I don't know where that went. Let's see. Let's try to move over a little bit more. I don't even know if that took off anything. That one took that off. Okay. Just keep doing that. This is the easiest. I usually don't get myself into a situation where I have to do this, but that's the easiest. All right, just flute the tip. Or send down these thinning flakes. 
Okay. See how that worked? All right, so let's say that you're, you can't do that or you don't want to or something is holding you up. What's another way? Well, let's get it back to the, the drill-like form first to where you pressure flick yourself into a corner, so to speak. Make it thick again. As far as the length, I mean the width to thickness ratio. It's very, well, it's hard for someone experienced to get into that situation because in order to get here, you have to push only downward or working with material that doesn't flit nap well. This is a heat treat. If you're working with something that does not flit nap well, and you get yourself into a situation where it's that drill like tip and you want to know how to thin it down you're not going to have much success no matter what method you use because the stone is not cooperating <clears throat> and it does not want to cooperate so that's that's fairly thick let's see let me get make it worse Usually the worst situation is narrow and thick. Now back in the day, the way that they would thin this on artifacts that you see sometimes, is you bevel it. You'll lose a little bit of the tip, but not as much as the previous. You just start beveling. Turn it over. And uh, regrind. Bevel again, same direction. Okay, so you're gonna get a twist in the tip, but it's if you it's still thick on this view. But if you turn it, it got a lot thinner. This is how they used to do it back in the day. If they want to thin down a thick tip, just bevel it. See how thin it is in that direction? It still looks thick here, but it's thin there. Okay, bevel it, so you get a twist in it. And uh, the third way, let's see, I said there was three, four different ways. Uh, let me think here. I said there was four different ways. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into the fourth way where it gets very, very narrow. Uh, one more way to thin this down. Let me think about this. I should have wrote, written these down. I got such bad ADHD that I can't remember. Once I get distracted, the memory just goes blank. So let me just think about this while I ruin it again. Oh, I know how it was. Yeah, the third way is, is to zigzag it. Okay. 
let's do this let's get it back to the bad situation thick tip okay we still got some width on it so it makes it a little bit easier let's just take it down a little bit more so we don't have room to do anything with or almost no room Yeah, so like I said, this situation with the thick tip problem happens with poor quality material. And you're going to be out of luck in many cases if that's what you've got. If you just got poor quality material, you're not going to be able to thin it down. It's not going to cooperate. It's got to, you've got to have some kind of cooperative stone, at least a little bit cooperative all right it will take me too long to get this really really narrow I don't want this video to go on very much longer so to thin down a thick tip like this you can zigzag it which means you get a foothold somewhere usually near the tip and you pop out a big flake just pop one out going downward and inward all right just pop one out like that this is kind of like fluting from the tip, but it's not quite. And then you go like this and grind it down where the next flake's going to come off. Flip it over. Pop another flake. This is zigzagging. Okay. Scratch downward. Turn over. Pop out another flake. Lots of pressure. Scratch downward. Pop out another flake right where that bolt, that right where that that came off. Scratch downward. Okay, and then do the other side. Get a foothold somewhere. Pop downward. Scratch it back. Turn it over. Pop inward, scratch it, pop inward, scratch it. You can abrade it with an abrader too, but it's just a pain in the butt. It's just a pain to get that abrader out every time. And then you push another flake off, scratch it. Flake, scratch it, another flake, and you keep doing that. Oops, premature flickeration will get you. All right, see what, yeah, let me pop that out. You gotta learn to push inward. It'll thin the tip out. Uh, it'll thin the tip down. Okay? You can zigzag it like I was doing. Now when I'm doing my flint napping, I tend to use percussion to assist in this particular task. I just did all these techniques with pressure. I prefer to thin this down with percussion randomly. Because pressure just drives me nuts. It takes too long, too much preparation, wears down the tools too fast, and the results are usually not that good. So, 
I use indirect percussion because I can no not only thin down the tip with one or two strikes, but I can also start thinning the interior. Just with random flaking. And I don't mind getting out the abrader each time because I'm not removing that many flakes. Okay. It takes a lot less time and a lot less effort, a lot less flakes. All of that leads to a more enjoyable napping session in my view. in my opinion. And a lot of times when I'm finally getting down to finishing the tip, I do it last many times and I'm kind of worn out and I'll, I'll create some step fractures, but then I'll say, that's all right, I'll just leave it in. But I prefer to thin things down with percussion. Okay. And then finish out with pressure. What did I do? It's a little bit crooked. It's all right. All right, you get the idea. Okay, so hopefully that answered that question. Thin down a thick tip. Alrighty, there you go.